Hello and welcome to the show. Now the Mercedes SL65 AMG Black is already a really, really a rather crazy car to begin with. So naturally, I want to make it even sillier. I'm not quite sure how much power you can get out of this. I'm hoping this will be another one of the cars that will get past the 1,000 horsepower mark. There is no engine swaps available for it. I mean, it does start off with a twin-turbo V12, but uh, yeah, just how much power we're going to get out of this, I don't particularly know, and how much handling we're going to uh, get out of, uh, out of it as well, even when we're sticking on all of these falls apart. Again... No, no idea on this one. 661 horsepower to begin with. 700 plus torque is, you know, crazy, crazy figures. I think actually this car, I've just got various bits and pieces already bought. I think I might have tried to build one of these for the run out of fuel race we did a little while ago. But I suspect this was uh, this is where the parts came from. There's some nice big front tyres, 285s at the front, and we're going to have 345s at the rear. So that should be good for traction and should be pretty good for turning as well, having those sized uh, front tyres. We may as well stick all of these bits and pieces on. The car is incredibly heavy, 4,219 pounds. Now... While, yes, that might hinder acceleration a little bit when we compare it to the likes of the tiny, lightweight, classic race cars, it does also potentially give us some more stability, which can come in very handy with cars of this nature. Of course, we have still got the weight reduction to apply to the car. I doubt, though, that uh, it is going to take off that much weight. We may see it in the low 3000s, but that's probably about as light as the car is going to get. PI-wise, I suspect this is going to be relatively... I'm not sure we're going to quite get it up into to P-class. We will have to wait and and see. Okay, 3,385 pounds. So we saved almost a thousand pounds with the weight reduction. We're up into R-class now for the engine. I'm really, really hoping that we can get some impressive power figures. I really hope that uh, I haven't made a mistake in choosing this car. And impressive torque figures as well, let's not forget that. It's already up to almost 800 torque. Of course, the main, the main upgrades, the camshafts and the turbos, are where lots of the power are going to come from. There we go, 874 horsepower, 850 torque. Pretty good. Pretty good. I just want to see. I just want to see that that thousand plus horsepower. Uh, because yeah, there aren't that many cars. There aren't that many standard engines that will get out over a thousand horsepower on on Forza. Could we see over a thousand torque? I think that might be pushing our luck a little bit more. We haven't upgraded the turbos though. Here we go. Hey, we're up to a thousand and nineteen horsepower. I think we should see a thousand torque as well by the time. There we go. A <laughs> thousand and four. Talk. That is mega talk. That is seriously okay. It's not quite up to Hummer levels or the racing truck levels of talk, but <laughs> that is insane, insane talk figures in this car. I wish we could put this engine in more vehicles. It'd be a fantastic one to swap into cars. Um, 1,045 horsepower as well is not bad. I think we're what two, three hundred talk more than the Enzo. The Enzo engine. I think that's 700 ish. It might be up towards 800 though. So, when that's fully maxed out as well, we're talking. So there we go. <laughs> that's some impressive figures with the Mercedes. PI, though, is still noticeably quite low. Only a mid-ish R-Class. So handling might be interesting with this. Of course, to test out this monster of a car, we have come to the Virginia International Raceway. The Mercedes will get five laps around the Patriot alternate layout in an attempt to go as fast as possible. Now, our current leaders, the Toyota NASCAR, a 1070, was up into P-Class. I would expect it to be safe from the Mercedes, although we have seen surprises. The Lamborghini Diablo, lower PI than we have from this Mercedes, is up at a 107.6. If this car has got decent enough handling to make the most of the power that it does have inside and off the line, that is incredibly impressive. 
That was very little in the way of wheel spin. Getting that car going. I'm incredibly early on the brakes and we were still getting 160 miles an hour. From a standing start, 160 miles an hour into the first corner is... Yeah, that, that's silly. Silly speed. Could we see... Uh, it might be asking a bit too much for this to get 200 miles an hour down the straight here at Virginia. But... Might be possible. Because unlike the only car that's ever done it, the Alfa Romeo 33. And that did it from incredible power to weight ratio. A lot of the other cars that have had similar power to weight ratios couldn't put the power down. They just spun the wheels for a mile. And this might not have that problem. Although it is quite heavy. So whether the power has got more torque than just about everything else though. So we will very quickly find out. We do then have to try and get it slowed down if we do get to 200 miles an hour. And that might be a... Uh, <laughs> that might be the tougher ask of the car as we round this final corner. Okay, second gear we can't quite go... Oh, we get not quite an ultra smooth launch out of there and then we do perhaps struggle a little bit more it's 182 miles an hour we are on the brakes uh, no we can't push that anymore okay unfortunately as much as i was hoping we could just go straight to uh, full throttle out of that final corner we can't quite do it and we are also braking relatively relatively early but still i think it is uh, not quite as, as leery as I was expecting from a Black Series Mercedes in some respect. I think the giant tyres that we do have on this is helping. Where are we going? Get turned in for that corner. Up this next corner, this is where every single car will go sideways. <laughs> Mercedes is no exception. Mercedes is no exception whatsoever. I should probably try and be a bit more delicate with the car. It's very very effortless when this thing is floundering around and to hold it sideways etc but if we go for a good lap time we should probably not be doing that right little bit better out of the final call was the lap time wise 11 2 was a bit of a scrappy lap yeah, we're not going to be challenging the top cars around here 180 miles an hour very similar actually to the alfa romeo to the 8c that went out last time i'm a little so I'm a little surprised by that. I guess the Alfa Romeo also did pretty good on the traction front. It did have fractionally more power than this, but considerably less torque. thought this might out-accelerate the Alfa, but it, uh, it does not. I do think the Alfa was a little bit better under brakes. I think we're struggling a little bit to turn in, and I think that may be where we are losing some of the time. We don't have the agility through these very, very narrow sections. Oh, no, that's going to get some more sliding third gear up here and a bit of patience with the car might be in order oh and i'll completely bug it up that turn we could have left it a little bit longer before turning in i know this track relatively well now still make mistakes of that there's a one corner that is the toughest corner i reckon on the track to get right still yeah still turning in too soon or too late and having issues there okay we're being more careful on the power a 110.4 a little bit more like it from the uh, SL here. I daren't go any later than that under brakes into this first corner. I think we may be able to get away with it ever so slightly, but with the size of the weight of this car, trying to get all of all of this momentum stopped for that first corner is a little bit on the scary side and will be very, very easy to be a fraction too late on the brakes. And that's gonna make a big difference. And you're gonna end up straight into the wall. So yeah, I'm currently playing it a little bit safer up into turn one. Try and try and be neat and tidy. I think where we lose time compared to the likes of the Diablo, just got to wait that little bit longer to get on the power. You've got that little bit more understeer in the Mercedes, so you lose time through these slower sections and the nature of this circuit. It is a lot of fiddly technical stuff to start the lap out. Yes, we do have this lovely long back straight for the power to uh, to work its magic, but there's a lot of technical stuff. We're into the 109s, 1099. Can we get any more? I don't know. I think I've actually gone now far too early on the brakes down here, which is not going to have helped us. <laughs> I panicked. We've got to wheel across the puddle, and that's not going to do well either. We've got, 
put worse and worse into that uh, first corner now, trying to uh, get it sorted. Yeah, we lost four, four, four tenths, I think it was, uh, on that first sector last time out, but we were much quicker through this middle sector. I just don't quite trust the car to, uh, to get stopped in the same way that I have done with some of the other vehicles. Still trying to be as neat and tidy as I can through this middle section because we've found some more lap time getting on that power. The higher gears should do us quite uh, quite nicely. I can't take that speed. <laughs> I was a little bit braver. I thought I could get away with a bit more speed. There's just no front end grip. I had two cars in a row now that have had ridiculous power and it's all been not being able to get the front end turned in has been the issue. Both this and the Alfa Romeo have uh, fallen foul in exactly the same manner. <laughs> We're going to do a big wheel spin up towards the line, and then we're going to spin across the line, hey, and go for a tumble as well. Uh, <laughs> I was being a bit stupid. Thought I could get away with holding that. I could not at all. Uh, whereabouts are we? Oh, we're on the infield. Ah, there we go. I spy the road. Okay, we're going to... Fine, you know what? You can stay there, Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, understeer. Understeer is what kills this car a little bit. Uh, the actual the, the power delivery, the traction is pretty good. We can, we can make the most of the 1,000 horsepower, the 1,000 torque out of the slower corners quite nicely. Coming down this back straight, we get up to a good speed, but we lose so much time through the more technical sections, the car just not able to get turned in, not able to carry the corner speed that we might expect to see, and yeah, hence a little bit of a struggle. Anyway, the lap time of 109.9 will put the Mercedes into 13th place. It beats the Cadillac CTSV, BMW M6, Porsche 550, Spider. However, loses out to the Aston Martin Vanquish, Porsche 718, the Alfa Romeo 8C, the Rotary McLaren. It's not as terribly bad to drive as it could have been. You know, it's not a horribly Larry. I mean, it can be a horribly Larry car if you're a real moron with the throttle, but. A small bit of caution and it's really not a problem it's yeah the understeer and the brakes not being amazing that uh, do cause it a couple of issues it's straight line speed however should be pretty damn impressive of course to get to the car's top speed we have come to Le Mans or at least get to as close to the car's top speed as we can on Forza because well while the straight here is very long it's not completely limitless um what do we reckon at the moment 240 miles an hour we do have a little bit less power than the Alfa Romeo so perhaps we will not quite see what do the Alfa do 257 miles an hour from the Alfa I think perhaps we might struggle to achieve that higher a speed and indeed it looks like a 244 is yeah what we're going to be getting with this car in mean, 244 is still pretty damn good top speed that's still very very fast so let's see how close we can get to that 244 here the bumps shouldn't be an issue the plus side of having a bigger heavier car the bumps down this straight should not cause a problem I was ready. I was ready for a big understeery car this time out. Maybe not quite for the brakes of said big uh, understeery car. We we made it stop. The balance isn't too bad, sort of controllability wise, on the. I was going to say on the tarmac, but on the dry circuit, we have seen some cars that have been okay in the dry, being not very nice. Uh, sorry, okay in the wet, and then be not very nice when we go to a dry circuit. That's not the case with this. It's still just the same pretty decent traction but can't carry corner speed right onto the straights the bumps almost caught me out as i tried to get to the throttle as quickly as possible we got bounced a little bit sideways did manage to recover it. it's coming from 90 miles an hour as we around the turn we are well we're up to 220 now it's, it's pretty decent you know it's definitely matching the 8c towards the 200 mile an hour mark but now we start to struggle that little bit more not quite having that 1200 horsepower as we get up to 240 miles an hour now we can go downhill a little bit here maybe pick up another mile an hour or two can we get 243 anymore for the mercedes yeah it very very briefly got to 243 just before i had to change direction for the corner a little bit of a oversteer moment at 240 miles an hour. Not really what you want from a car, but 
We made it around safely, and then we are on to the brakes to bring it to a standstill before ending up in a gravel trap. 243 miles an hour from the uh, SL65. I didn't think we might have seen a little bit more, but uh, that is the speed that the car can obtain. Yeah, pretty controlled down the straight, as you would really imagine. Bit of a bigger, bumpy, oversteery moment at the kink there than I was expecting from the car, but again, easily controllable with it. The 243 mile an hour speed will put the Mercedes into 20th place. It uh, goes a joint 20th place with the Fast and Furious Dodge Daytona and the Ford GT40. Beats the BMW 323, the Porsche 356. Actually beats the Toyota NASCAR as well. However, Losing out to Lamborghini Diablo, Bentley Continental GT, Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. The fastest Mercedes here is still the C63. That did 247. That did have the Enzo V12 in it, though. So, yeah, a little bit more power from that uh, C63. And that's up in 13th place on the leaderboard. Overall, they're not a bad showing from this car. Could have been a a lot more, a lot more Larry than it actually was. Certainly these nice big tyres help deal with such tremendous power and torque. You know, the understeer just a little bit too much for setting an incredible lap time, but uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this video guys. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye.